From accidental haunting to tragic death, some of the most talented actors have enjoyed their success that followed, but some have suffered for their art. In this five-part miniseries, we'll be looking into some of the most infamous curses that have left an everlasting shadow over Hollywood. Warning. This episode contains images that some may find disturbing. In 1922, Friedrich Wilhelm Monod delivered the first and, to this day, one of the most realistic vampire films in history, Nosferatu. The film starred Max Schreck in only his third feature film as what would go on to be the iconic Count Orlok. A pale, gaunt-looking figure dressed in black, with pointy ears, two prominent middle fangs, wide protruding eyes and long sharp fingernails. As the story goes, Thomas Hutter, played by Gustav von Wangenheim, travels from his home in Visborg to complete the sale of a house to the mysterious Count Orlok at his Transylvanian castle. During his stay, Hutter begins to believe Orlok is in fact a vampire and becomes increasingly threatened. Orlok takes an interest in Hutter's wife Ellen and makes his way to Visborg but is distracted by Ellen sacrificing herself long enough for the next morning's sunrise to destroy the Count. The plot may sound familiar, that's because it's the unofficial adaption of Bram Stoker's timeless 1897 novel Dracula. As the producers did not acquire the rights to the novel, writer Henrik Galeen was asked to change the character names in an effort to avoid copyright. Count Dracula became Count Orlok. Jonathan Harker became Thomas Hutter, and the term vampire became Nosferatu. Despite the changes, Stoker's widow and heirs sued the studio. If that wasn't bad enough, the film was banned in Sweden for, an, for excessive horror until 1975. Nosferatu was the first production by newly formed studio Prana Films, founded by Enrico Dijkman and Alban Frau. It would also be their last, as they declared bankruptcy to evade the lawsuits from the Stoker estate. The court ordered all prints of the film destroyed. Miraculously, some copies survived, which is all the more surprising given that cameraman Fritz Wagner used only one camera for the entire production, which means only one negative of the film ever existed. The idea that sunlight can kill a vampire was an original idea for the climax of Nosferatu, in Bram Stoker's novel, it is stated that sunlight weakens a vampire but is never mentioned as fatal. Stoker's novel was loosely adapted in 1921, a year before Nosferatu and 10 years after Bram Stoker's death. Unlike Nosferatu or the novel, Dracula's death takes place in an insane asylum where a woman is haunted by nightmares of another inmate claiming to be Count Dracula. As this doesn't follow the, film, the novel's plot, Nosferatu is still considered the first true vampire film. No copies of Dracula's death were believed to exist until critic Troy Howarth stated in his 2015 book Tome of Terror that a copy survived in a Hungarian archive. Max Schreck's performance as Orlok was so believable that an idea circulated in the 50s that he was an actual vampire. This became the plot of the 2000 film Shadow of the Vampire, where famed character actor Willem Dafoe played Max Schreck as if he were a real vampire during production of Nosferatu. Schreck went on to make almost 30 more feature films before dying of a heart attack in 1936. Murnau died as a result of a car accident in 1942 when the 14-year-old driver of his rented Rolls-Royce crashed into an electrical pole. In 2015, unknown assailants broke into F.W. Murnau's grave and stole his skull. In 1979, the film was remade, again a German production directed by Werner Herzog and starring another well-known character actor, Klaus Kinski. By 1979, Bram Stoker's novel had entered public domain, which meant it was no longer subject to intellectual property and filmmakers were free to use its content. Herzog decided to use the character names from the novels such as Dracula and Jonathan Harker, but kept the plot and visuals more in line with the 1922 film. But also, much like the original, the remake had its own battles. As the world had moved on from silent films by 1979, two versions of the film exist, one strictly in German 
and one where the German actors speak in English. This was a request by its US distributor, 20th Century Fox. And while the film is a visual marvel, some of the English dialogue seems a little awkward at times. Due to a small budget, the crew consisted of only 16 people, while the haunting opening sequence was filmed by Herzog himself. Adding to its burdens, the 1979 remake faced heavy criticism for animal cruelty. As it was suggested, sheep and horses were treated poorly, but the main complaints came from the 11,000 live white rats released for a pivotal scene near the end. The rats were dyed grey by being submerged for a moment in boiling water. Half the rats died while others licked themselves clean. Klaus Kinski had a notorious temper and was infamously one of the world's most difficult actors to work with. Despite this, Nosferatu was the third of his five collaborations with Warner Herzog, with the first being 1972's Aguirre, Wrath of God, where the famous story goes that Herzog pulled a gun on Kinski after he threatened to walk off set. In 1988, Augusto Caminito produced a loose sequel to Nosferatu titled Nosferatu a Venezia, Vampire in Venice. Kinski again played the Count, but his behaviour all but destroyed the very rare film. He would often storm off set, lock himself in his trailer, refuse to follow the script or lighting cues, had one actress fired and replaced by a co-star's girlfriend after she visited the set, and even sexually assaulting co-star Barbara De Rossi during a scene involving turning her character into a vampire. Caminito shut down production after six weeks and made the best of what he had, releasing the doomed film two years later. Just like his Nosferatu predecessor, Klaus Kinski died of a heart attack in 1991. Only one of his three children, Nikolai, attended his funeral. His two daughters, Paula and Natasha, have both since claimed he was abusive towards them. Werner Herzog has continued to make a successful career in filmmaking, screenwriting and acting, most recently appearing as the client in the massively acclaimed Disney Plus series The Mandalorian. To think, this inspirational and timeless 1922 classic was almost lost and could have only been spoken about as a story, much like London After Midnight. Another remake for Nosferatu is now on the way, most likely to be released next year. It is directed by Robert Eggers, who recently had success with cult horrors The Witch and The Lighthouse. The film is said to combine live action with colourised digital backgrounds recreated from the 1922 original. In the role of Count Orlock is Doug Jones, famous for playing distinguished looking creatures in films such as Hellboy, The Shape of Water, Quarantine, Pan's Labyrinth and The Bye Bye Man. Jones recently shared a set photo of himself in costume. Next time on Hollywood Curses, a 1994 cult classic which inadvertently led to the tragic death of the lead actor in a stunt gone wrong, The Curse of the Crow. <laughs>